Hello, and welcome to another session of the Change Exchange. And um, as always, this is going to be fascinating because our guest is fascinating. Yes. Melanie Ramji, welcome. You're a publicist, blogger, events manager. What am I leaving out? Mom, full-time job. <laughs> full-time <laughs> job. <laughs> and you're known professionally as Hypris. Why? Yes. How did that um, happen? I think when the social media um, industry started, it, it, uh, it was just a name. That I was working on, um, and I because I do PR, I bring hype to different brands. So Hypress kind of worked, uh, and it just stuck. Empress of hype. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> just stuck. So here we are, 15 years down the line. I kept it. But you started out wanting to be a fashion designer. You studied yes. studied fashion design. Didn't it's you? true. How did that happen? Um, I think I just have the fashion um, gene. designer gene in my blood. So I'm just really good at it, but it wasn't my passion. So I studied it just so the parents could get off my back because it was something I could study. They didn't get what PR was, yes. um, but it was just something I was passionate about. I love people. I love selling things. I like making brands sexy, and, of, and I love writing. So I think my parents are a bit old school, so they didn't really know what PR was. So, so they want you to get a real job. So yeah, <laughs> fashion designing seemed like a real job at the time. So I studied it for three years, and yeah, when I was done, I could say bye. I'm done PR, mm. um, done fashion, went into PR. You and your boyfriend started something called Eargasm oh, when no, you, you were barely out back. of nappies. <laughs> <laughs> Tell That's me about true. that. That's um, true. I, I had a DJ boyfriend. Um, he worked at a nightclub. I would run the door. And we were like, let's start a record label. There was We loved hip hop. And at the time, there was no hip hop labels. So we were like, let's, let's do this. Uh, I was still in standard nine, I think, 17 year old. We were like, let's do this. I had my weekend job um, and I would work at the club in the evening. And we started a label called Eargasm Records, which then uh, changed and um, morphed into Eargasm Entertainment. Um, and we did that for a few years. And that's what got me my name in the, the PR industry. So you kept that going while you were studying something yes, else? It, yes, because mm. he had his DJing. Um, I was studying my, well, I was in matric. And when I left matric, I did fashion design. And we, we kept running it while we were still studying. So if you're talking to young people now, um, uh, how do you make it happen for yourself? Is it, uh, would you say keep those two streams going, get education in some direction, but in the yeah. meantime build up something? I think young people, millennials, and probably the next generation are that. They are different. So mm -hmm. they are having three jobs. So we were the beginning of, the, of a different generation or a different kind of um, person. So these days, millennials do keep three jobs, um, which is great because you can't just have one job in 2019 to survive. So definitely, I'm all for it to do different things. Um, and maybe you do one to build your career and another one for passion. And that's where I am. Uh, someone asked you, well, said that he would pay you to tweet for oh my a gosh, campaign. I, yes. What was it, Brutal Fruit? Um, that's how I started with social media. I had registered for my Twitter account. I really didn't understand where it was going, but my very first client was a PR agency who contacted me from Brutal Fruit and so said... So when they, when they contacted you, I mean, what did you think? What, how much did you know? I, 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 what is Twitter? I was like, what do people talk about? You have these 120 characters. You talk about going to the loo or waking <laughs> up in the morning. And the whole campaign was around Kim Kardashian coming to South Africa. So I was like, okay, what do I need to do? And they offered to pay me to tweet, but my profile was private at the time. So the obvious thing is I had to unblock it. I was a bit scared because now everybody could see what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I'd be open to the world. Um, and I think we were all skeptical when social media first launched. Everybody can see your business. It wasn't, you know, it was, it was Facebook on steroids. But I tried it, I gave it a go. I think I got paid 2,000 Rand and it was amazing just to talk about meeting Kim Kardashian. Um, and that's where it all took off. That's where my social media career started. When was that, more or less? I think 2009, when she came to SA, yeah, just before World just Cup. Just a decade ago. It was just a few days ago. And how have you seen the, the PR world change Completely in, evolved. in this decade? So I'm from the old school. We used to fax press releases to people. I'm, I'm, I also I'm, remember I'm that. that. Old. <laughs> Uh, so one at a time, you send to, to this newspaper, you then create another letterhead. So I'm from that generation where it was one at a time. Now you've, I've got a media list of 3,000 media where that's impossible. 
So obviously it's all email. And I think it's very different from then where it was, it was, it was hard work. You had to be diligent and make sure you send to the right person with the right fax number. These days you press one button and 3,000 people receive the email at the same time. So the face of PR has completely changed. Yeah. And obviously if you don't keep up with the now, going to get left behind. But it is also dangerous. It, I mean, the, the, that thing about completely. being public and everything you type is out there in it the is. world. I wish more people would be aware of A that. A little bit more careful about <laughs> what you say. Um, I think that, that yeah, it does have its pros and cons. And I think the, the good thing about being self-employed and running your own company and building your own empire is that you can be available for your clients at all times. Mm. So it's a little harder when you're an employee. But the face of PR requires that you are available to your clients 24 hours a day because anything can happen if you represent a brand you have to be on call you did work for one agency more I, than worked one for, agency? I worked for a few agencies but i did spend a, a large uh, part of my corporate career working for an agency i worked on a few alcohol brands but it did it gave me um it gave me the experience of working in a corporate and it also gave me i paid my dues i got my contacts it, it um the safety of the salary was great, getting that paycheck at the end of the month. But it also meant it left room to, for growth because there was only so much I could grow in the agency. Mm. Um, and it was a smaller agency versus a big corporation. Um, so at one point I said, let, let me try to do this on my own. And here we are, nine what, years later. What was that like, you know, letting go of the salary? Yes. And now you have to pay your own salary. You, well, you have to generate your own, your own salary. I think it, it's obviously really, really scary. I had considered it for a few years before I had actually done it. I think with the, re the recession that was happening from 20 2007 and eight, there were no raises, and um, I didn't see myself growing in the in the business other than becoming, you know, a, a director of the company, maybe one day the owner. But why not start your own thing? So it was very scary, uh, and I think it's about taking that leap. Running your own business is obviously not for everybody. So I thought, what's the worst that can happen? I'll fail. I can try again or I can go back to corporate. But it doesn't mean my life ends. So I gave it a try and it worked. So it worked out. So face your fears. Face your fears head on. Because yeah. what's the worst that can actually happen? You know, just try to get a job again, go back into the workforce. And what has been the most challenging thing? Um, geez, keeping clients is, yeah. is very diffi difficult. I think the, the face of the industry, people do change jobs. So um, you have a year contract with somebody and then the client changes or there's a new marketing director or the brand changes direction and they don't need PR anymore. So it's like any other business. It's, um, it's the evolution of business um, that you deal with every day. And what do you say to your clients? What must they be aware of because of the changes and the, 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 the very public nature of everything? Of our business, <laughs> yes. I think I have a variety of clients. So... The ones I co I'm more concerned about are the artists who tweet as they think, um, and it's very immediate, and the consequences could be dire. So with them, I'm a lot more for, for, uh, firmer, and I'm like, this is how it works. Be careful. Everything is immediate, so be a little bit more careful. I think brands, it's a little bit more easier to explain to them because they're obviously protecting a bigger brand, um, a corporate brand, which then is very careful about what they put out. So that's more controlled. Um, it's the ones that are crazy, like the artists that you need to, you know, keep keep locked down. And if someone offered you a big salary in a corner office Not now? Not a chance. I've, I've, I've been offered that many times over the past nine years, and I'd never look back. I work at my own hours, at my own pace, and I get to see my kids growing up, mm. and that's what's the most important. Do you work from home? Is your office I do work home? from home. Yeah. I have a, an office upstairs in my house. I, I do completely run it differently from my household. So when I'm in there, I'm on work mode and I do switch off from being the mom downstairs. And lately, uh, one of your latest projects is as ambassador and pro bono PR for yes. the Special Olympics. Correct. How did that happen? How did you get in interested? So the, the CEO, her name is Ansela Smith, she's, she had been chasing me for two years to get involved. And I was just so busy. My business was finally making some sort of profit. It was about four years ago. Um, so I was running. I was constantly running. I was busy looking for new work, securing clients. And she, I gave her a bit of a run around. And when she finally got me to sit down with her, I was in awe of this organization called the Special Olympics. Because 
what I didn't know what it was because I know about the Paralympics and obviously know about the Olympics, but what is the special? What's special about it? Um, and she she educated me. That what it's, is um, the answer to that? So the Special Olympics is it's a it's a leg of the Olympics for people with learning disabilities, so people with Down syndrome, ADD, ADHD. So everybody who's has a has a learning disability, and I hate the word disability, mm. but it's how I best describe really it. Really differently able. They have special <laughs> abilities or different yeah. abilities, yeah. but th th we offer them a platform, and it's a global organization that was started years ago by John F. Kennedy's sister, um, and she started this organization. It's 50 years, well, 51 this year. It's been running. It gives these people... Um, why, did, why did she start it? Was one of her kids... Uh, no, I think in the family, oh. they, they had had um, people with special needs. Um, so she started it, and her brother helped her voice her passion, and it grew, and then it grew grow globally, and um, it's gl grown in Africa, and we bring home the most medals gold medals in compared to the other counterparts, our other Olympic counterparts that a lot of people don't know about it. Mm. So I jumped on board as a volunteer. It's become my biggest passion. I love it. We're actually going to the Olympics this year in March. We're taking out 71 athletes to compete. Why does it mean so much to you? I just, I think everyone just, there's a cause that speaks to them. And I could be for woman abuse. I could be for so many different things. And it just, it called me. Mm. It called to me. And I think it was very close to my heart when I fell pregnant at 40, um, 12 months ago, 13 months ago, well, at plus nine months. Um, but when I fell pregnant, it was a reality that I was 40. I could have a kid with Down syndrome. What would I do? And it put me in the position to, to think about that. Um, and it, it meant a lot to me. So it, uh, it talks to me every day. And I'm honored to be a part of the organization. And I've, I'm getting all my celeb friends to come on board too. <laughs> and we'll chat after this. Okay. <laughs> Plans? Um, Are you a planner or do you see a door open and you walk through? Um, I'm a bit of both. Um, I think I've mastered this PR game, so I want to try new things. Um, I want to venture into speaking and sharing my story and talking more to young people. I've always had a fear I'm very good one-on-one. -on -one but I'm not good in a group, or uh, so I want to conquer that fear, but not just to conquer the fear, but to chat to younger girls, share my story, tell them where I've come from, and make them realize that dreams do come true if you work hard and you pay your dues. Do you think that yeah. is what they need to hear? I think millennials get lost along the way, thinking everything, obviously, instant gratification. Uh, it's not a secret they know that about themselves, but um, paying your dues just gives you a longer, a long longevity in the industry versus... Let me grab as much as I can now because I'll get to the next thing next week. Mm. Um, so I want to share my story and talk about it more. Uh, I want to focus a lot on my blogging because it's where the future is. Everyone's online talking about it. Um, I've done a lot of mummy blogging, which has been really awesome, which means I get a lot of freebies for my kids, <laughs> which is great. It's always great. But PR will always be there because it's something I know with my, mm. I can do with my eyes closed. Mm. Yeah. And uh, talking about family and so forth, uh, I want to go back to your history a little bit first. You went through a, a divorce about what five, six years ago. About six years ago. It's never easy. Not at what all. did What did you learn out of that out of that process? I think to be humble about it, um, to be understanding. Um, nothing really bad happened. We just woke up one day and said, "This is not working out for us. We were not great for each other. We were both good people, but not good for each other. So we decided." You know, let's part ways. There's also um, a, a honesty in there, right? There was honesty in it. And be, we had be a little Be honest boy. with yourself. Be yeah. honest with yourself. Yeah. And I think it was a, it had a lot to do with my parents who, like parents, they stick to through things, the previous generation or my parents. Mm -hmm. And I've been through a divorce with some of my friends, like with mm -hmm. their parents being divorced. And a lot of parents, like the older generation, stuck together for the sake of the kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm fortunate enough to say, Let's talk about it. Let's be mm -hmm. honest with each other. It's not working out. And my husband at the time was very understanding. So we parted ways. He was very supportive with my son. And here we are six years down the line. And we, 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 we're good friends. Mm -hmm. But I thank him because he led me to my soulmate. So How did you meet you and Mark? Um, so Mark, Mark um, we met in the industry. He's also very involved in entertainment. Uh, we have a lot of mutual friends. So I always saw him on the scene when we went out, but I had never met him. 
uh, and a mutual friend introduced us um, shortly after we separated. Um, and he had also been going through a really rough marriage and a rough point in his, in his marriage. Um, so we spoke about it and we were just friends in the beginning and along the line we, we fell for each other. He's really not my type. I always say that. <laughs> he was, he's definitely not my type. But then I realized I might not have a type. So <laughs> along the line we fell for each other. And uh, What made you decide um, that, that he was he, actually in spite of not being your type? <laughs> You know, outside of his looks and his, the outside, the shell, he's, uh, he's everything I've ever wanted in a man. He's honest, he's understanding, he's so giving, he's so compromising. Um, he was good for me. So where I failed in the previous relationship, he made sense. And he loved my son. I think ap apart from everything I've just said, he loved my son as his own. Um, and that takes a lot for a, a man to love a man-child. It's different when you have a daughter. It's easy for a, a man to like someone's daughter, but a boy, it's a little bit difficult. So uh, he loved my son and my son loved him. So my son is blessed to have two daddies. <laughs> and you now have an extra extra son. I did, I um, inherited a 15, well he's 15 now, but when I inherited him he was a little younger. How does one do yeah. that? It's um, a, it's a, a teenage difficult. boy is diff difficult enough, even if it's your it's, blood. Yeah, um, I'm blessed that he's a good kid. Um, he's honest. He's not really into crazy things that other teenagers are. That I'm also so says blessed. something about his father. It does. It mm. says a lot about the parents who raised him. But a very good kid. Um, we, we, we're getting through the school thing. I mean, he's not getting the A's that we hope he is. But it's, it's a journey. Mm. But we're blessed that he's, uh, he's not crazy into girls. He really doesn't even like his mobile phone. We're encouraging him to play with his, his phone. But he's just <laughs> a good kid who stays at home. It's obviously changed the dynamic in, in the household. My son now has an older brother, which is a blessing uh, because he can learn so much from him. Um, so and has it changed you? Did you have to, I almost want to say, become more adult more quickly? Definitely. I mean, we spoke earlier and I, I could walk around the house in my undies because it was my <laughs> birth son. Um, that's completely changed. So um, there's been a huge shift in the way we present ourselves as parents. Um, I think it is, it's, a, it's very hard to love somebody else's child. So mm -hmm. that's a reality. I mean, my husband really loved my son very quickly. For me, it was a, it was a huge change to love another child as much as I love my own. Um, and you can't weigh the different kinds of love. Yeah, but, but he it's was also adjustment. much older. He was a lot older. Oh. I think when I met his Way dad... Way beyond the cute stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, when I met him, I was at the cute stage, and I was kind of the, the crush. And I think when the daddy and I got together, it was a bit awkward for him because I was the older woman that he had a crush on his daddy's <laughs> friend. So that was a bit weird that we've passed that stage. And um, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge adjustment. And it's about, it's about you as a person, how you take it. I loved it. I embraced it because we actually asked his mom, can he come and stay with us? And uh, that was, it was great for him. And advice? There's so many people, women yes. and men, find themselves in this situation? What's the one thing that we should keep in mind? I love blended families. Um, I'm all about family. So with me, it just worked out. Um, I think it takes, it, takes a lot, it's, it takes a lot from a person, but um, it can only be good for the family. So Commitment. I'm in here. I want to be yes. here. I'm going to You're make gonna this make work. You're going to make it work. Yeah. We all come with baggage and bad term to use, but... My kids are not baggage. My, my husband embraced my child and I embraced his. And actually, we are a stronger family because of it. And, and your little girl? Oh, my God, she's so naughty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when I met my husband, I was already like late 30s. So we had agreed no kids. Um, and then the universe said, no, they need a girl to, uh, to show them life. And I fell pregnant just before I turned 40. And I had a beautiful baby girl. I was hoping for a boy so we would have three boys, um, and I had a little girl, and it's such a blessing. Uh, it's completely different or different from anything I ever expected, have but they, I love it. Have, has she changed you, do you think? Completely changed really? me. I now have to get up early every morning. My firstborn was very calm. The teenager's calm, and this one is crazy. She wants to wake up at, the, at sunrise and talk to you, um, and she's a very good sleeper, but she likes to get up early, but she's completely changed me. I think having a a kid at 40, it's a, it's a big deal. I don't have the energy I did at 34, 35. <laughs> uh, it's a huge adjustment. Uh, but Josh has given me a new, um, a new spur to life. Mm. So love it.
you and Mark are both busy people out there in the very public world. How do you, yes. in practical terms, how does one keep the connection going? The connection between the two of us. Yeah. I think a lot of the stuff we put on social media is um, we put out what we want people to see. So yeah, we course. do keep a lot of it private. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what we show the public is very different from what happens at home. Um, it's a social media life. You want people to see the best of the best. So we do have problems at home. Our relationship's not perfect, but we do work. We work at it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think we're really close, and that's what keeps the connection between us um, constant. You know, the, the, the world of social media is really your, where you are, where yes. you work. Words of advice for especially youngsters, maybe, starting out, setting up a Twitter account for yes. the first time? <laughs> well, it's Instagram. Or Instagram. Instagram. I think the world of Instagram is very curated. So people want to see the best of what you have. Mm -hmm. As much as they want to see authentic, most of most of the world just want to see your best, your, your only pretty Louis authentic. Vuitton, pretty at <laughs> so as much as we say we want authentic and all of that, people want to see the best and they want mm -hmm. to see you doing well. Mm -hmm. So if you're constantly at the same stage, you do lose you do lose followers, you do lose likes. People want to see you succeed, really. At the end of the day, so put your best foot forward. If you need to be authentic and you're paid to do it, that's a different story. Um, we we try and put a real um, the real us forward the best of what we can offer. But it's not its not always the case. Sometimes you have to put your prettiest picture that was three months old that you're posting <laughs> today. It's not always real. And um, one also has to protect your children. Right? Yes. So my both kids are on social media um, just because they're both kiddie influencers. Uh, my son's got a private profile, and that's by his choice. He's old enough to understand a bit more about what social media is. And we've chosen to make his private just because we've had a few instances where weirdos came up to my mom at a mall saying, hey, Musa, and it freaked her out. And we realized, you know, it's not really safe. And there were all these uh, kids being kidnapped last year. There was a rise of um, kids being kidnapped, really. So it's private. My daughter, we really post delayed posts, so nothing in real time. Um, and also it's very curated. So we'll do photo shoots, we'll post her up. She does get sponsored by quite a few brands, so we have to post stuff um, mm. up about the brands that she uses. But yeah, very curated content. Yeah, so you have to constantly be aware of that kind of balance. Yes. That, um, in one way, it is part of your professional life, yeah. the whole family's professional life, but on the other hand, there has to be a, a, private, a private life. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We have to protect the kids. And I think till they get to an age where they understand, I mean, he's only and seven. And they can make their own he's real seven. informed yeah. decisions. I don't think he really understands yeah. it. But, he, I mean, they talk about it at school. He knows what's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, he knows it's putting up pictures of himself. And uh, he always say, Mom, I made this cookie. Take a picture of it. And he, and he made it in school. Um, and I'll take the picture, but not necessarily put it up because... Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a good look for the for his profile, um, but we we do find a balance in mm. doing it. And your personal space? You said you you work on top of your living my space. My house, yes. Um, home is home. It's my very um, special place. Uh, we protect that energy, so not everybody's like invited or welcome mm. at our home. We keep that very family orientated, and it's the, the one safe space because we both out in the world so much. Mark mm. and I. We keep home very private, so we, we love having people over, but we do protect our space. Home and is what, important. Uh, where have you chosen to live? I don't mean specifically, but is it a suburb? Is it more city center, apartment, city living? Yes. So I've always been a city girl. I live in an estate a few minutes from here, so Sandton Central. Um, but it just makes sense for work. All my clients are very centrally based. I'm, I am a city girl, so I'll, maybe in my... 80s, I'll move to the farm, but uh, for now it works for me because I'm so entrenched in the market of entertainment. Um, we have to be very central. It just works. I don't want to travel late at night home for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I had lived in Centurion and it was beautiful, but I, I prefer to be where my clients are. So I live in a safer state. Uh, my kids can ride outside. We uh, don't really know the neighbors like we did growing up, so you can't really go and borrow sugar. Um, but that's just how it is in. In, mm. in the suburbs, in the north. And so, what, what made you choose this space? Uh, do you go for trees or for light or for space? I love the safety of it or the perception mm. of safety because I want my kids to not live in a bubble. I want them to have a little bit of what I had. And obviously when I grew up in, let's say, the 80s, 
<laughs> the 70s. It was a lot different. We, you could walk around, walk to the shop. Mm. I want them to get a bit of that. It's not a reality everywhere. Um, and I think the safety of living in a, in a state gives them a bit of, a, a more of a sense of reality. Mm. So they can walk down the road to their friend's house. Uh, they can walk to school. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's more of a, re a reality. Them. And how do you, with working in the same space, my husband and I both yes, work from yes. home, so I oh understand gosh. the problem. Maybe after my own heart. Um, yes, you work in your pajamas often, yes. but you have to actually make a kind of difference because you can't let it, it bleed into everything. It is true. So my husband and I both work from home. So I think we, we get up and we shower and it's a real job. So oh. we work it as corporate. It's, it's not every day. Um, so we get up, we drop the kids at school. Uh, his boy is in a different direction. My boy is in a well, our boys are in different directions. And then we meet back home and uh, we work in our different spaces. It's a real job. We take mm. it seriously. There are the odd days when you have your pajamas on and you have the freedom to do that. But I think you need to respect what you do as well. So we do do that. Mm. We take it as a serious job. At five o'clock, we start looking at our watches because the nanny has to leave at five thirty. Uh, and she lives in, in the yard in our cottage. But we, we take it as a serious um, as a serious job. <laughs> but it doesn't end at five because all we do is take our laptop and go downstairs and work. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, thank you for finding time for, Thanks for having to spend me. with us. It's lovely. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Honored. Thank you. All of the very best to you as well. Go well. Bye-bye.